We are born free. And we will die free. The time in between, though, that's complicated. In that time, governments, institutions, and our egos will limit our ability to find true freedom in this life. These are real stories of real people overcoming the odds, persevering in justice, and unlocking their potential. Welcome to Finding Freedom. Here's your host, John Oderman. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Finding Freedom right here on the Lions of Liberty podcast network. And if this is your first time listening to Finding Freedom, shame on you. I'm just kidding. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Happy to have you here. Today's episode will be a solo episode. So no guests today, just me. Lucky you. And uh, it's kind of crazy. Um, it seems that when I do these solo ep- episodes, the news just explodes. And <laughs> Is, I mean, I knew obviously coming in to uh, this week, several days ago, that I wasn't going to have a guest. And I was like, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to have some ideas. I'm batting around in my head. What do I want to talk about? And then Friday hits and just all hell breaks loose. Um, so much stuff to talk about. So much stuff going on. Um, one of the most egregious infringement infringements of our rights is happening right now. Um, in New Mexico, at the hands of the uh, the governor of New Mexico, um, Lujan Grisham, and we'll get into that. She's coming after the guns. She's a gun grabber, and uh, we'll see where this goes. I mean, if this isn't a red line for most people, then I don't know what is. You you don't have one. If this isn't a red line when they infringe on your right to bear arms, then your red line is uh, is worthless. So we'll get into talking about that. Um, We're also going to talk about paper straws. People hate paper straws. Everyone hates paper straws, right? No, actually, some people like them and think that everyone should be using them. I know, shocking. We're going to talk about why they're actually bad for your health, too. Not only don't they work, they're bad for your health. Um, We'll talk a little bit about there's a big antitrust uh, suit uh, brought on. Um, by the DOJ, the Department of Justice, along with attorney generals from 38 states that are um, bringing an antitrust suit against Google. We'll talk a little bit about that. I don't want to get in, into the details, honestly, because I haven't read enough about it, but I'll give you my high-level opinion on it. And then, of course, we'll talk about the great unvaxxed Novak Djokovic, who won the U.S. Open. We'll get into all of that, but before we start down that road, I uh, just want to request, want to ask, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you're subscribed already. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe on Apple Podcast or Spotify, Overcast, whatever little podcasting app you keep in your, in your pocket there. Um, please subscribe to Finding Freedom, the Finding Freedom podcast, the solo feed, and the Lions of Liberty Network feed, so you get my show and Brian's show, Mean Age Daydream, as long as our Friday show, uh, Meme Wars. If you've done all that and uh, you're still not, uh, you know, you're not satisfied with the amount of content you're getting from the Lions of Liberty, please consider joining the Lions of Liberty Pride. This is the time of year um, in the fall when the, the temperature starts to dip down, uh, the leaves start to change. The air is crisp and uh, football season starts. And when football season starts, that is when we start our bonus show, Degenerate Gamblers, which is a a fun time. Myself, Brian, and our good friend, um, legal counsel of the Lions of Liberty, uh, Rico. Um, We dive into a lot of the sports sports betting talk, um, as well as just some banter and good times as we talk about football games and the NFL and college and anything else that is on our minds. So join the Lions of, of Liberty Pride by going to patreon.com slash Lions of Liberty or Lions of Liberty dot locals dot com. All right, so let's get into it. So what happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico? What is the governor out there doing? Where did this come from? 
And what are the parallels to what happened with COVID back in the spring of 2020? So what do we need to be watching out for? Because this is how precedence gets set and how terrible policy starts to bleed from state to state and uh, from blue state to blue state mostly and uh, infringe on the liberties of more and more people. So recently in Albuquerque, so Wednesday night, um, there was a tragedy outside a minor league baseball game. An 11-year-old boy was shot. He was riding in a truck with his aunt, I believe, and some other people. Um, he was shot in the head and killed. His aunt, um, as well, was shot. Was was not um, did not die. Is hospitalized. Um, allegedly, someone in a black SUV fired 17 shots into this family's truck. Um, I'm, I'm trying to research if if, if a before the show if, if a suspect has been found. I've seen nothing on it. Um, it's kind of hard to filter through the headlines because everyone is talking about what the governor has done in response uh, to this, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, but I don't think a suspect has even been identified yet. Um, nevertheless, it has not been apprehended. And so this shooting, tragic shooting, of course, when anyone dies, it's a tragedy, especially when it is a child. It has followed up some other um, you know, other acts of violence, other, uh, I guess, potentially, some of these might be accidents. Uh, we'll, we'll get into them. Um that have occurred here in uh, in New Mexico, in the Albuquerque area in the past uh, weeks to months, I guess. So last month, August 13th, a five-year-old was shot to death while asleep in a motorhome. Um, four teens entered the, entered the uh, motorhome community in two stolen cars. So are already stealing cars, um, breaking the law that way, and opened fire on the trailer. And uh, the five-year-old um, was, was killed. The girl was struck in the head by a rifle's bullet and later died at a hospital. The teens who have been apprehended, they face murder charges. So good thing. Good. In that case, that the, uh, you know, the perpetrators have been apprehended. Um, also, what was cited by, uh, by Luhan, Luhan, the governor, um, a shooting death in Tahos County, New Mexico, of a 13-year-old. Um, a 14 year old old boy shot and killed the girl with his father's gun while they were at his home. Uh, authority said, um, really unclear what the circumstances around that were. Um, I don't really know. So I'm not sure what, what, what really caused that um, situation there. All tragic. Whenever anyone young dies, um, it's tragedy. So what the governor of New Mexico has done in response, and she cited these specific, these three specific incidents, deaths in her reason for what she has implemented. And what has she implemented? A 30-day firearm suspension. A temporary, if you're not watching the video and you're just listening, like most people are to the audio, air quotes, a temporary 30-day um, firearm suspension, which applies to open and concealed carry, this uh, would include everything from city sidewalks to urban recreational parks. Uh, the restriction is tied to a threshold for violent crime rates currently only met by the metropolitan area around Albuquerque. So it's two counties there um, that uh, where the suspension is being enforced. Um, in these areas, no person other than law enforcement um, or a licensed security officer shall possess a firearm either openly or concealed. The state of New Mexico um, is an open carry state. So it's an open carry state and the governor is overriding that with this emergency um, declaration, which is totally unlawful, totally unconstitutional um, and infringing on the rights of every single uh, resident of that state. So the penalties, violators could face a fine of up to $5,000 as well as civil penalties. So the governor's order calls for monthly inspections of firearm dealers statewide to ensure compliance with gun laws and for the State Department of Health to compile a report 
on gunshot victims at hospitals. That includes age, race, gender, and this is ethnicity, along with brand and caliber of the cal- and caliber of the firearm involved. So some seriously draconian stuff. Um, not surprisingly, you know, immediately this happened on Friday night. So immediately Republicans in the state are calling for impeachment of, uh, of the governor. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, I'll talk about it in a minute. Even you know, some Democrats in the state are pushing back and saying that they will not be enforcing uh, the, the governor's uh, declaration here. So that's good. And Elon Musk spoke out against it, which is always nice. It's good to see people in area in uh, in places of uh, who have platforms, persuasive people to weigh in. He said, at risk of stating what should be obvious, deliberately violating the Constitution is next level illegal. How soon can this person be removed from office? That is a good question, Elon. How long does it take to impeach and remove someone? How quickly? Can we get this order struck down? Um, but a lot of people are not going along with this. So the um, one of the counties where this is being enforced, Bernie, Bernalillo, Bernalillo County, I believe that's it. So the uh, that county's DA, Sam Bergman, who once served as a Democratic Party leader and was appointed by New Mexico Governor Lujan Grisham, Um, on Saturday, joined Albuquerque Mayor Tim Keller and Police Chief Harold Medina saying they wouldn't enforce the order. Uh, Bergman said, as an officer of the court, I cannot and will not enforce something that is clearly unconstitutional. This office will continue to focus on criminals of any age that use guns in the commission of a crime. Uh, Bernalillo County Sheriff John Allen said he was uneasy about how gun owners might respond. He said, I am wary of placing my deputies in positions that could lead to civil liability conflicts, as well as potential risks posed by prohibiting law-abiding citizens from the constitutional right to self-defense. Great to hear, I mean, great to hear this pushback. Bravo that people are not just laying down and taking this and individuals, this is where it matters, at the local level, your county sheriffs, your DAs on either side of the aisle are saying, whoa, this is overstepping the bounds of uh, the office of the governor. She does not have the authority to do this. This is putting the people um, that, you know, these individuals, your sheriff and your and your DA, this is putting into, into question their sworn oaths and uh, they are not going along with it. So bravo to them. We'll see how this plays out in the coming days and weeks. This, uh, you know, I I could see if something like this were to work, you know, if people did just roll over and allow us to happen and allow their, uh, you know, their rights to bear arms to be stripped from them. I could see how this could be used as a template in other blue states. Let me drink a water there. For example, in California, in New York, in uh, Colorado. Um, Many states obviously could try to follow in the footsteps of what Governor Lujan Grisham has tried to do here. But it looks like this will uh, it looks like the the good guys are going to win this one. I'm hopeful. Um, We'll see, though. We'll see how it plays out. Of course, immediately when you see this, you start thinking, you know, flashbacks to uh, March of 2020, two weeks to flatten the curve. This is 30 days to flatten the gun violence. Um, Makes no sense in either case. Um, it was not two weeks to flatten the curve. It was two weeks and then two months and then two years to uh, essentially stamp out economic growth and see how far we can push people around. That was with COVID. And this 30 days to flatten the gun violence is not, of course, is not going to do anything to stop gun violence. Um, any rational, reasonable person knows that those who are committing gun violence are not following laws. If you are shooting someone, if you are trying to kill someone, if you are murdering someone, you are breaking the law because murder is illegal. So someone that is going to do that, someone that is going to take a gun out and fire 17 shots into a vehicle killing an 11-year-old boy is not going to be swayed 
to not carry that gun by the governor saying, hey, you can't bring that gun out of your house and can still carry or open carry. That it's insane. It's insanity. And we got to start calling these people what they are when they pull shit like this. They are insane people. They are not acting rational, rationally. They are emotionally driven people who do not have the ability to reason. And you just, you can't let them win. You just say no, and you don't comply. You don't comply with this. I'm sorry if you live in New Mexico and, uh, you know, this is not legal advice. I'm not an attorney, not a lawyer. Do as you would like to do. I would just say if I was living in New Mexico, I would not comply. This is not legal advice in any way. It's not even advice. It's just saying what I would do. So do as you will. And uh, yeah, this this stuff has to stop. So this is a test. This is a, another test to our liberty. Tests like this are going to continue. I mean, as, as you've noticed over the past few years, things like this have become more and more common as, uh, I don't know, I think COVID really emboldened Democrats and it really sort of brought these emergency powers to the forefront and they've seen that that they you know have had success doing this with the um, pushing the limits with these emergency powers um, to be able to push their agenda that way. So you know you can and of course this is going to be fought in the courts. It'll be fought with, with impeachments and things like that. But I mean at the same time, I mean and I, this is why I love how, how Ron DeSantis what he's done in Florida. He's used his emergency powers to push back against you know, what the federal government is, is doing or implementing with when it goes back to COVID with, uh, you know, forced maxing, forced vaccination, things of this nature. Um, DeSantis has pushed back against that in Florida, making it illegal for mandatory masking, mandatory vaccination, um, things of that nature. So I like when people on the, you know, the other side of it push back against it and use those same emergency powers the same way, because at the very least, that is making people aware. It should make them aware on the left as well. Hey, you know what? This could make you know the people who were you know we we think that just us doing this, us being in control in these certain blue states, we can do what we want. If they see red states doing the opposite, it has a counteracting effect. And uh, you know, worst case scenario, it leads to national divorce, and you know things could be a lot worse than that. So let's keep the conversation going for national divorce. But that's. That's where we are. That's where we are as a country <laughs> right now. Sums it up. But to totally change subjects from guns to paper straws. And I'm not sure exactly when uh, when the paper straws started. I, I think I first noticed it in a restaurant when we were um, driving back from our vacation in maybe 2017, 2018, sometime in that time frame. And uh ordered water before the meal water is delivered to the table and i went to take a sip out of the water and i realized the straw that was in my drink wasn't working it was just disintegrating as i tried to drink water out of it and i said what kind of idiot would use a straw that just disintegrates when you try to use it and i found out this was a new thing people were doing with paper straws because plastic straws apparently are uh, the worst thing ever and are single-handedly polluting all of the oceans with plastic. Shocking, I know, because a couple of years later, after they started getting rid of plastic straws and replacing them with paper, they came out with a thing called these disposable masks, which people left everywhere in parking lots and parks. And um, But the masks apparently do not pollute the ocean and do not you know, contribute to that problem. The good to know, the masks magically have special powers where they don't go in the ocean and get stuck around fish and kill wildlife. The masks don't do that, but just the plastic straws do. It's something about the plastic straws that they have. This must be the way they're made, that they just sneak their way into the ocean. But the masks are, are caught up in nets, I guess. It's 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 insane. I'm obviously just uh, being sarcastic. <clears throat> but what's happened with, uh, with paper straws is, hey, surprise, surprise, they're not really healthy. They don't work and they're, they're bad for you. So there's been some research done in Belgium 
where they tested all kinds of different straws from supermarkets, retail stores, fast food chains um, in the country. And they found that the majority contained PFAAS. There's probably a way to say that acronym. People like, you know, saying acronyms. Is it PFAS? People probably say PFAS. I'm going to say that. So what is what are PFAS? It's a family of synthetic chemicals used in manufacturing of consumer products um, because they can't resist because they can resist stains, grease, and water. So researchers found out of the 39 brands sampled that 20 of them contain these uh, these PFAS, these uh, so-called forever uh, chemicals. Of the straws tested in the study, those made of paper were the most likely to contain these chemicals. 18 out of the 20 brands contained these forever chemicals. That's 90% for those of you who are trying to do the math in your head. All five of the stainless steel brands that were tested were not. They had zero um, PFAS, zero of those chemicals. Uh, Exposure to these forever chemicals can be associated with low birth weight, high cholesterol, thyroid disease, and increased risk of kidney and liver cancers. Uh, Various states, including California, Colorado, New York, and Oregon, have banned plastic straws from food establishments in the last five years, and chains like Starbucks have phased them out. So what, what are we to do? What are we to do living in a world where if we try to use the paper straws, not only are they terrible, but they might be poisoning us. If we try to use the plastic straws, they're killing baby dolphins in the ocean. What are we to do? Well, one thing you can do is just not use a straw. You're an adult. Just drink a drink like an adult. Pick it up and drink it. Or you could do like I do and just use a, use a plastic straw, if you can, and protest the paper straw. Because I was raised on uh, plastic straws, and I'm not going to change now. I'm 40 years old, and I'm not changing from uh, from plastic to paper. But in all seriousness, like there is, there's so much stuff that we use that is tainted with these forever chemicals, from you know wrappers that would be in like fast food to things that you buy at the grocery store that, that are packaged in this stuff. I mean, these forever chemicals are getting in, getting every, everything, and our systems are polluted with them. They're probably all in our water and all that too. So, I really want to get hung up on the uh, whole thing about the paper and plastic straws. It's just a fun thing to uh, to talk about. But uh, you are an idiot if you do, in fact, you know, go out and buy paper straws and use them on your own, or if you actually celebrate the fact that establishments are using paper straws. You're an idiot. But <laughs> I just want to make that clear. Um, but on, on the on the flip side of that, you know, if you're someone who's who reads this article and thinks, oh my gosh, you know, if I'm using paper straws, they're killing me. Probably they're not. Probably it's just as likely that the the, the cheeseburger wrapper that your your you know your cheeseburger is wrapped up in is killing you, and you know the the happy meal that your your child's uh, you know meal and little toy is boxed up in is is probably not good. For your child and and like everything else around us that comes out of these, you know, mass produced these factories with all these plastics. It's not good for us. It's not good for us. Big shocker. So what can you do? What can you do? How do you fight this? How do you combat it? Well, you try to stay healthy. You stay hydrated. And you work on your gut health, man. Try to clean that stuff out of there. Try to be as <laughs> try to be as a, as efficient as possible and uh and fight back trying to, you know. Eat good, a good balanced diet and uh, work out and just do the best you can. That's all you can do. Because if you are carrying a lot of excess weight, a lot of fat and stuff, that's where a lot of these chemicals are probably going to be be holing up and uh, and latching onto you. So try to try to stay in, in the best shape that you can. That's that's my advice. Is it the right advice? Probably. I'm not a doctor. A doctor probably wouldn't tell you that. A doctor probably would say, hey, use a paper straw. It's the best thing to do and uh, take these meds and be on your way. But I would say, don't do that. And just uh, probably watch out for your own health and maybe find uh, find your health advice from listening to podcasts like I do. But anyway, moving on, moving on to Google antitrust. So there's a, is Google a monopoly? 
I don't think so. I really don't. Is Google a good company? No, probably not. Um, do I think Google serves a very important purpose in the marketplace? Do they meet a demand, a consumer demand in many different facets? Absolutely. Hugely so. Massively so. I mean, I have so many different things that I that I utilize on a daily basis for from things from working on this podcast to my email to different businesses to corresponding with friends, Gmail, um, just Google search, YouTube, so many different things that are tied into this massive um, Google corporation, Alphabet Soup, whatever they call themselves. Um, huge company. Are they a monopoly? No, because there's competitors. There's there's competitors in search engines. There's competitors in email. There's competitors in uh, video uh, content. There's there's Rumble. There's there's other things. I will say this though. I mean, Google is getting a special treatment. They have special relationships with the government. There's a you know a sort of different exchanges. You know, I scratch your back, you you scratch mine with the government, certain certain uh, contracts, things of that nature, where Google is able to get their, their foot in the door. They share data with the government. So that stuff is shady. That stuff's a problem. I think that is, is a huge issue, massive issue. Um, the government, though, is going after Google for being a monopoly and essentially like what this whole thing is around. So well, just to give, give the basics first. So um, tomorrow, well, actually, I think Tuesday, the Department of Justice, this, I think it's 10 weeks this is supposed to go on for. The DOJ and a bipartisan group of attorney generals from 38 states will argue that Google has violated federal antitrust law by illegally monopolizing search and search advertising markets. The DOJ and these attorney generals will argue that Google entered into illegal exclusive dealing arrangements to prevent rivals from competing in general search and search advertising markets. What this essentially comes down to is Google's partnerships with Apple and Google being the default browser on Apple iPhones and the relationship with Apple. They're going to be calling a bunch of Apple executives and to testify and all that stuff. And, you know, who knows what comes from, I mean, what comes from this? It kind of, this is very similar to what happened with uh, with Microsoft 20 or whatever it is, 20, 25 years ago. And Microsoft ended up winning. But, uh, you know, Bill Gates will blame that, um, you know, antitrust suit that Microsoft faced back then on the reason why Microsoft really wasn't able to pivot into a, a, largely a lot of the space that Google occupies now with with search and email and and microsoft was um because a lot of their resources were you know pushed uh, diverted into into fighting this antitrust suit that they claimed they weren't able to to keep up that's what bill gates would say and probably if my prediction i think what will end up happening here is totally irrelevant of what happens with this uh antitrust suit with google um AI is going to change the way the search works. Is it going to be open AI? Is it going to be a different company? Is it good? Who, I, I don't know which company is going to be the one. Ultimately, it might be might be one or two or, or two or three that come to the forefront. Ultimately, I think there, there will be a leader um, who does become the, the new Google um, for internet search. And I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy the lock that Google has in the search market when the term for searching the internet is Googling something. That's how you know they have a lock on the market. Just Google it. I mean, it's it's like uh, it's to the level of Kleenex. It's actually way past the level of Kleenex. I'm sure more people say tissue than Kleenex. Or I'm sure it, proportionally more people... God, how am I going to say this? When people refer to what you use to blow your nose, um, probably the proportion of the people who say um, Kleenex is less than the proportion of the people when it comes to searching the internet who say Googling. So Googling is more predominant than 
Kleenex in their individual um, arenas. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know if that made any sense. But getting back to, so what happens with Google? I think the end of the day, artificial intelligence is going to take over internet search. And maybe Google does somehow, you know, hold that piece and own it or buy the company that does it. Who knows? Maybe they do. They, they have a good shot at doing that. Um, I, prob- I would guess that they probably will lose out though. And when they do lose out, if they do, they will come back and they will blame this just like Gates blamed the antitrust lawsuit um, years ago. So what is the government trying to get out of this? I honestly, I don't know. I mean, you have to remember a couple of key things here. Google, not a good actor. The government, not a good actor. All of these attorney generals, not good actors. The DOJ, not a good actor, not a good institution. So when you have a lot of nefarious people with ulterior motives coming together, ultimately, what are they trying to do? They're not trying to help people. Um, we know that because that's not what politicians do. That's not what bureaucrats do. They're not trying to help people. So I'm not sure like ultimately what their motive is here. Um, I, I would guess it's probably trying to get their hands around more of the um, consumer data, user data. They want a piece of that pie. I would almost say with a near, I'm not going to say 100% probability because that'd be ridiculous, but north of 90% probability, that is what the, the motive is here for the government to be able to get full control or a lot of control over the massive amount of data uh, that Google accumulates. And, you know, I mean, it's, it is like, it's laughable, crazy, the amount of data that Google has in every single person, everyone's search history. I mean, do you want the government to have, they probably already do have your search history, but do you want them like legally to have your search history, like underneath, like one of their three letter agencies will be like, oh, this three-letter agency is overseeing internet searching to make sure that it's safe and that nobody gets hurt and that nobody, you know, searches for the wrong terms. So like, does does anybody really, does anybody want that? You're a crazy person if you want that. Um, Just, I mean, the the same people who want paper straws are the same people who want that. That's that's how crazy (laughs) you would be. So I, I, I don't, I mean, that's where this is going, but it's like, it's kind of like a weird situation to be in. So like, we're supposed to root for Google then here, right? But Google is, Google is not a good company. They're, I mean, they're an evil company. They're doing like the same thing the government is doing with our data. And like, it's, it's not better for the government to have it. I'd rather Google have it, but Google either way is going to be sharing that data with the government. They're just going to be doing so in sort of a quid pro quo manner where it's, uh, you know, they're, they're getting something in exchange for it. So it's, this is really just a, a massive, massive tug of war that's, uh, that's going on here. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. I really, I really don't know what's, uh, what is going to come from it. Um, so I don't know. I, I really, I, I honestly just heard about this a few days ago, looked into it just a little bit. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take long to figure out what, you know, is at the, is at the core here. So we'll see what happens. Moving on, moving on to the U S open, moving on to tennis. I did not watch the U S open, did not watch any tennis, but I do have a favorite tennis player. My favorite tennis player is none other than the great unvaxxed Novak Djokovic. Uh, Novak Djokovic, who missed the 2022 U.S. Open, the 2022 Australian Open, and many other tournaments because he did not comply, did not get vaccinated, and he wasn't allowed into Australia. He wasn't allowed into the United States. There's many different tournaments that he has missed. And he said to sit on the sidelines and watched his peers in tennis, who are not nearly as talented as, and as gifted and as hardworking as he is. And they also don't value 
body autonomy. They don't value liberty. They don't value freedom. He sat on the sidelines and watched as uh, as they won and they celebrated titles that he was not allowed to get a shot at. But that changed this weekend. They let him back into the U.S. Open. He won the U.S. Open against a Russian, Danilil Medvedev. Medvedev? Medvedev. I think I'm saying that right. So really interesting that you have a guy who was shunned from the tennis community for not getting vaccinated. And there's conflicting information if uh, Medvedev is vaccinated or not. It's Russia, so... I don't even know what their vaccine is there, but whatever. I've seen articles that he is. I've seen articles that he isn't. But anyway, two individuals with controversy around their vaccination status playing in the 2023 U.S. Open Championship and uh, Novak wins. Just fantastic. Fantastic to see. And if it couldn't get any better, I'm going to have to play a clip here. Um, Friend of the show who was just on um, recently with – Brian McWilliams, John Ziegler shared on his Twitter something totally awesome that I'm going to play for you here. So this is during the uh, the U.S. Open final match between Novak and uh, Medved. And I'm just going to play this here and let you all watch and listen. This is just this is just amazing. <laughs> Possible. Good for you, Novak. That's a pretty cool shirt. That is a nice. Just showing him putting his shirt on. This after the win, I believe. I will take you to the Moderna shot of the day. Moderna shot of the day. Oh my God! It it doesn't get any better than that. It does not. I'm sorry. It does not get any better than that. You have the most famous, one of the most famous unbags people in the world wins the biggest tennis, one of the biggest tennis tournaments in the world, and the, <laughs> the shot of the day is sponsored by. One of the biggest COVID vaccination pharmaceutical companies, Moderna. Oh, my God. It's just so amazing. It is amazing. Why would Moderna put themselves in that situation? Hilarious. Oh, you got to love it. We live in a simulation. I don't believe we do. I don't believe we do. I just believe that what goes around comes around. And at the end of the day, the good people do win. Novak Djokovic stood up for what he believed in. He did not back down. And at the end of the day, he left victorious. And, you know, a lot of people, there's been a lot of talk about these, you know, different COVID mandates coming back. There's been, uh, there was a school in, I believe, Virginia or maybe Maryland that brought back masking and was making third graders wear N95 masks. And, you know, I've, I've told a story on my Instagram and, I think I might have shared a meme wars a few weeks ago of uh, my my run in with, and I was outside walking to a trail, um, seeing someone driving in their car pull a mask up over their nose after they made eye contact with me. Like after like after looking at me, uh, they decided to pull their mask up. Um, yeah, it's there's still people out there who are very much into masking, and there's still people out there who are really hoping that these uh, these COVID mandates are coming back, but. You know, there's also a lot of people who are just are not going to do it. And there's a lot of people who maybe they did comply last time. Maybe they got one shot. Maybe they got a couple shots. And, you know, I've talked to I've talked to a lot of people who like their experiences. OK, yeah, you know, I, I got the uh, and I'm, uh, this isn't me. I did not get any vaccine, any COVID-19 vaccinations. This is me telling a story, um, talking to a friend saying, you know, that, that he ended up getting vaccinated and his uh, significant other got vaccinated and they both got super sick when they got vaccinated for like two days, like we were in real rough shape. And then they both got COVID and they got super sick and they were down for like the, my buddy's uh, significant other was down for like, she was down for like a week, I think, after getting vaccinated. And the two of them are like, no, we're not doing this. This is stupid. Like, why would we get a booster or, you know, another 
<coughs> excuse me, another one of these vaccinations. It's just absurd. doesn't make any sense. So a lot of people have been through that experience of not only like getting the vaccination, which made them sick and then getting sick again, and then getting another vaccination and getting sick from the vaccination and then getting sick again. There was a, on the, uh, the Fox news show, the five, the one, you know, the one, uh, the one liberal guy, I forget his name, but he was saying that he's going to get boosted again. And he's had COVID three times. Like, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? But he laughed when he said that, which I thought was just so, so, so ridiculous. There's just people out there just, they just don't think. They don't think. And, you know, it's worrisome when you do have the president of the United States, Joe Biden, saying that we're going to, uh, you know, have a vaccine. We're going to get a vaccine that works. He actually said that. Get a vaccine that works this time. He didn't say this time. He added that. Um, and then he said, yeah, we're probably going to recommend it for everybody to take it. Now, what does recommend mean? Does that mean they're going to force federal employees to do it, people with federal contracts and go through all that crap again? I don't know, man. I, I can't see that happening. I honestly can't see that happening in an election year. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of like, you got the Fauci's of the world who are just fingers crossed. They're counting on this, uh, you know, this new variant, whatever the heck it is um, to, to really spike up with cases and whatnot. But I, I just, I just think people are so done with it, man. And it's not only people on the right. It's, you know, it's just people in the middle who are just like, no, like we're, we're not, we're not going down this road again. Now that's not to say that if they do flip the script a little bit and they tweak a thing here or there for climate change, that's not to say that people wouldn't comply with that because I think they will. And I think that's extremely dangerous. And I think that is the next play um, that will be coming from the establishment is the, uh, the climate change play just two weeks to flatten the CO2, the, uh, the CO2 emissions that's coming. I, I don't think that's a question of if it's a question of when, and you'll see things like, oh, you, you can drive, no limits on your driving if you have an electric vehicle or if you have a hybrid vehicle. But if you don't, then you can only drive between these hours or in these days of the week. And I don't know, to, to tie things back to the beginning, to the New Mexico governor, um, Lujan, gun, Lujan, Wuhan. Ooh, that's a rhyme there. To, to flip it back to that, I mean, Right. It's great to see you have your your local authorities on the ground not complying there. What would happen for a climate lockdown where local authorities comply with that? So that's why local ele elections are very important, guys. That's why it's important, you know, that that, you know, the character of the person you're voting for, for, you know, a D.A., for a county sheriff, you know. Whatever they're, if they're a Democrat, if they're a Republican, go talk to the person, ask them these questions and see if they're authentic. See, see, see what they say. I mean, I, I, I haven't done this myself and I, I, something that I'd like to do. I'd like to know, you know, what, what would my local DA say to that? Um, and there's an election coming up here. So I could ask each candidate, what would they do in a circumstance of what's happened? In New Mexico, if it happens in Pennsylvania, if it happens in the county I live in in Pennsylvania, Allegheny County, where Pittsburgh is, what happens if the governor rules that you, you cannot conceal carry in the state of Pennsylvania or in a certain county? What would that DA do? What would, what would the local county sheriffs do? What would the pe local people do at the, uh, you know, the, the local mayors and the, uh, the city council members? What would they do? Where would they stand? Where would your local sheriff stand? These are the questions you got to be asking, guys, because this is coming. It's coming. So get to know the people who are going to be calling your license plate number in when you're trying to go out and buy milk during a climate lockdown. Get to know those people that will be enforcing that. That's a good idea. And if the people who are going to be enforcing that are going to be calling in your license plate, when you go to buy that milk, you probably need to move. And that goes for me too. I, I need to look into that and see, be absolutely clear to understand where people stand and have a backup plan on how to get out of there quickly if that does happen. So that's all I got for today, guys. A little rant there at the end. Didn't plan on going for 45 minutes, but here we are. That's what typically happens.
during a solo show. I want to thank everybody for listening to Finding Freedom here on the Lions of Liberty Network. As always, subscribe. Subscribe to the show on your uh, your podcasting app and also on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, if you're subscribed on YouTube, go check and make sure you click that little bell too because we do go live on YouTube, especially on Fridays with our show Meme Wars. We're always live. <clears throat> Mostly we, we do record it on Friday during the day. We'll go live on YouTube and live on Rumble. So Rumble seems like the algorithm works a little better for pushing our video out to more people. So come, you know, if you're not on Rumble, I really do encourage you to start checking out Rumble. A lot of great people producing content on Rumble, and uh, we're trying to build a following there. So we'd appreciate a uh, subscription to our Rumble channel as well. And as always, subscribe to the Pride, guys. Join the Pride and uh, get the bonus content that we love. We're going to be doing an ep- a, uh, a bonus episode episode of our conspiracy show, Secrets, Lives, <laughs> Secrets, Lies and cover-ups coming up soon. So check that out. Of course, like I talked about at the top of the show, Degenerate Gamblers is off and running every Thursday or Friday. You, you can get that show in your bonus feed and subscribe um, at patreon.com slash lions of liberty or lions of liberty.locals.com. That's all I got. That's all I got. Everyone have a great week. I'll see y'all next week. In the meantime, always remember to keep your head up and the fires of liberty. Burning.